In this video, I'm going to explain continuous compounding interest, and I will show you how to calculate the future and present value in case of continuous compounding. If we have more and more compounding period per year, then compounding period becomes smaller and smaller. Then number of compounding period per year, uh, M, becomes larger and larger. So in this case, future value can be calculated as present time multiply 1 plus i power n uh, multiply m. m is the number of compounding period per year, i is the period interest rate which equals r divided by m, and r is the nominal interest rate which is m multiply i. In the limit as m goes to infinity, period interest rate i which is r divided by m approaches to zero the, in this case it is called continuous compounding of interest now let's calculate compound amount factor f over p or future value factor for continuous interest so this factor equals one plus i power n multiply m and we can rewrite i as r over m now we need to calculate the limit as m goes to infinity. In this case, this term approaches to zero and this term approaches to infinity. So we can extract an e term here and we calculate the limit as e power r n. So compound amount factor or future value factor for continuous interest will be e power r n or future value uh, can be calculated as p multiplied by e power r n f is the future value for continuous compounding interest r is the nominal interest rate compounded continuously n number of discrete uh, valuation periods which which can be one year two year three years and so on and e is the base of natural log Similarly, we can calculate the present value in case of continuous compounding interest. The present value factor equals the inverse of future value factor. So present value can be calculated as P equals F divided by E power R N. P is the present value for continuous compounding interest. Now let's work on an example. It is the previous example, but we are going to consider the continuous compounding interest rate. Assume there is an investment that pays you $2,000 in the end of year one, year two, and year three, and you want to calculate the present value at the present time and the future value in the end of the year three. And we have to consider continuous compounding interest rate of 12%. First, we draw the timeline. We are going to have three $2,000 payments at the end of year one, year two, and year three, and we want to calculate the present value of these three payments. The first payment is going to be at the end of year one, so we need to discount that for one year with the 12% of uh, continuous interest. The second payment is at the end of year two, so uh, n is going to be 2 and the last payment is going to be at year 3 so n equals 3 and now we substitute the, the factor which is going to be 1 over uh, e power 12% uh, multiplied by 1 and so on and the result now we are going to calculate the future value of these three payments the first payment is happening at the end of the year one, which is two years away from future time. So n equals two. The second payment is one year away from future time. So n equals one. And the last payment is exactly at the same time as the future time. So n is zero and we write the $2,000 and we don't need any compounding. And then we replace the factors e power 12% multiply by 2 for the first payment and so on and we have the result 